Hi, I'm Lloyd Dunlop, a sheep and lamb consultant from Gundawindi, Queensland, Australia. I'd like to talk to you about 10 things that you need to know about profitable sheep farming and production with Australian sheep farming. First step is to find what is profitable. Gross margin analysis of the livestock industries as at January 2016 shows the following graph. On the x-axis are the dollars, on the bottom are the enterprises that we're comparing, and the two bars in the graph, one is dollars per DSC or dry sheep equivalent, and the orange graph is dollars per hectare. The important thing to know in this first step of what is profitable is that you need to compare things that are alike. In this case, we're comparing self-replacing female-based enterprises to find out what's profitable, whether it be wool by micron or dual-purpose sheep or meat sheep or cattle or goats. Prime land has been a consistent winner in this particular comparison for over two decades. Next is the large dual-purpose breeds and then wool comes next and then cattle, then goats. Cattle and goats have been showing a recent lift in gross margin uh, margins because of price lifts in the last couple of months within the Australian market scene. All important to gross margin analysis are the assumptions placed behind each of the enterprises. In this case, the enterprises that we're looking at are first of all Derny Merino at 19 micron, Sam Marino at 23 micron, Riverina Marino at 21 microns, New England Marino at 18 microns. They're the respective wool cuts, they're the respective weaning percentage that have been assumed for this particular run. The national average for Merino sheep is 75%, so 80% is a generous figure, as are the two figures above. With those, we're comparing Dorper sheep, which are is a Dorper sheep is a euphemism for hair sheep, of which there are a couple of breeds we'll discuss later. These we look at continuous joining scenario, where the rams stay in all year round, an autumn join only scenario, and a double join scenario per year. The 170% figure used here is typical of my clients. Uh, who have between 125% and 280% lamb markings per annum and winning percentages commensurately as high. Bull goats will achieve uh, under controlled commercial circumstances 120% and cattle regularly do 90% carvings. Step two is to do it often. Having once found the most profitable enterprise from the lists earlier, one needs to allocate more acres to it. The sheep in the picture is and a red meat master, which is one of the new composite hair sheep breeds that are achieving very high gross margins. Having found what's profitable and then doing it often, the third step is to then cut your costs. One of the truisms of economics is that it costs money to make money. And so you should not cut costs until you have at least done step one and step two above. Looking further into the profit equation, we adopt a profit focus which says profits equal incomes minus costs. Expanding on that particular equation, we find that income can be expanded into price times throughput minus costs. Consultants always tend to work in these three areas. First on price in moving uh, the point of sale or the type of sale and marketing so that price per kilo can be lifted. The second one is in changing the throughput. And throughput is grossly affected by a number of uh, factors. If we expand the equation even further, we can find that it's affected by these three things, growth in kilograms per head per year, reproduction percentage, and the death rate percentage. These in turn are affected by nutrition, genetics and health. So when we come to look at turnover, we find that the most kilograms turned off the farm wins. You need to maximise the number of kilograms turned off 
the farm, whether it is wool, wool and meat, or meat alone. If you did one or two correctly, you are then able to indirectly influence price by choosing the right kilograms to turn off. This particular piece of knowledge has changed the scenario of what is actually a byproduct. Most merino producers think that wool is the main product and that the turnoff is the byproduct. In fact, for the last two decades, or since 1992 sheep cull, merino producers are now underperforming meat producers, and that wool has now become a byproduct of merino sheep. Merino sheep have to reproduce at figures below 42% land markings before wool becomes the primary product. When we start to look at the genetics of the sheep that are required to do these jobs, we have to look at the introduction of the polyesterous African sheep breeds into the late, in the late 90s that have made it possible for ewes to have at least two gestations per year. At a normal 100% of lamb, a merino ewe has to grow three high-priced fleeces and exceed 100% weaning each year to match these breeds below. We have here representatives of dorpers and white dorpers. We have many sheep, of which the Persian is one, and we have over here the white meat master. Here we have red meat masters, and here we have a cross between the red and the white meat master. And down here in the bottom we have the very glamorous and new sheep breed on the block, the Australian white, which has a great propensity to twinning. So important is this business of lifting kilograms. We also, once we realise that, we also need to lift conception rates because it has a direct influence on the number of kilograms potentially available to produce off a farm. So point seven is that the key to high sheep profits is high conception rates, not high wool cuts or high wool prices or carcass weights, which are all important, but nowhere near as important as conception rates. And what, that is one of the reasons why Polish Easter sheep will win in these, these circumstances because they can have two lambings per annum. After genetics, step eight shows that the importance of nutrition is the next priority on the block. It pays to feed profitable polyesterous sheep breeds. We can now explore the possibilities of moving sheep back onto grain country, replacing grain crops with forages for sheep and other livestock, and maybe even moving sheep onto irrigation and maybe even into sheds. One of the keys to high lambings is, of course, high quality feed at conception and lambing time. Next in order of importance are disease rankings. Whereas with merinos, flies and lice were important, they are no longer important diseases or diseases of economic importance, but rather with these uh, enterprises, infectious diseases such as uh, brucellosis, worms, foot rot and OJD are of high economic importance, followed by predators such as dogs, eagles and pigs. The final point to make in this talk is that joining times and, and time are critical. The duration and the timing of joining are of critical importance to profitability. Without them, chaos reigns in areas of supplementary feeding, marketing of sheep, and also uh, in management issues on the farm. However, these 10 points are only the beginning of the story. If you would like to know more about profitable sheep production in Australia, you can contact me at my website, www.lloyddunlop.com.au, or you can email me, lloyd.dunlop at bigpond.com.